Coming up in my best book series, here's another book I recommend to you. It's the story of film. Let me tell you why I think you should buy this book or read it coming up next. So this is a hardcover and it's pretty big and heavy. It's by Mark Cousins. I don't know him and I not getting any money from him to promote it here. This is a book about the overall history of film from the beginning to the present day circa 2020, 2021. A book like this, you can see how thick it is, is quite ambitious. Obviously to tell the whole story of movies in one volume, to me would be an impossible task. It's kind of fun to try, but yet, a book like this will leave things out inevitably, and I'll tell you what they are. First of all, let's talk about the positives of this book. I like what Cousins does in avoiding talking about the making of movies, how they're made, and the production process. There's a little bit of that in the movie, but overall he's talking about films that are impactful, meaningful, influential, influence style, and the intersection of film and culture, film and 20th century history at least. He does that really well, highlighting master directors, key moments, key films. Sometimes he'll spend a paragraph on a key film, but in, in a few, with a few films at least, he'll spend two to three pages on them. And he does go through, not quite decade by decade, but he breaks it up into seven or eight different eras in film. Another bonus to this book is it's in color. And I think this book was pretty cheap on Amazon. So with color photography, you're really getting a deal out of this if you can find this for under $30. Cousins seeks to do everything. In fact, to tell the story of film, he tries to discuss world cinema. He'll talk about Japanese cinema in the 1920s, Egyptian cinema briefly in just maybe a paragraph, but he'll throw it in there in the 1950s or whenever a particular country or region's cinema becomes lively and budding or even when it starts, he'll mention it. He'll mention the major players, the major directors and the major films. To go through this book is to get probably 500 recommendations. It would be helpful to know a little bit about film history while going through this. If you don't know who John Renoir is or Ozu, you're gonna have a little trouble. This will seem above your level. But if you know some of those key master directors or key movies, if you've seen a few of them, this book will really help you out because it will give ample recommendations, including say the best Japanese movie from the 1920s or the best Iranian movie from before 1960. He tell the story of world cinema, and he does focus mostly on Hollywood when it counts, or on England or on France when he's supposed to, say the French New Wave in the 1950s. But to shoehorn in some world cinema is helpful, but he also leaves some things out. One thing that bothered me, he basically doesn't mention science fiction. He'll mention a couple science fiction movies, obviously 2001 A Space Odyssey, but he flip, you flip the index, there's no science fiction in here at all, which is strange because as movie technology develops, so does the science fiction narrative in the 20th century. He talks a little bit about genres focusing pretty strongly on noir, not talking as much about Westerns as he should, or maybe romances. So you get what you get with this book, a lot of world cinema and a lot of things you haven't heard about tied into the major narratives, such as the major Hollywood studios, Charlie Chaplin, Orson Welles, and so on. But then he omits some things I think are major. He really will focus on the high stylist over what's popular. For example, for the 1950s, he's going to skip over Hollywood musicals and blockbusters and then go straight to what was innovative in film during the 1950s. Nevertheless, to focus on style, stylistic innovations, is to ground your book and say what I have been recommending, the Criterion Channel, the Criterion Collection, and curations like that. Overall, it's a beautiful book. There's a picture on every page. Most of the pictures are in color, or when they need to be, they are in color, good captions. And he will focus on the master directors. He'll spend five or six pages on Ozu, a couple pages on Wells, a page or so on Godard, and on and on while weaving in all of these major movements. And so he did a quite good job, I think, in 400 pages. A book I don't quite like as much, but is a decent companion to it, is The Big Screen. This by David Thompson focuses so much on detail. So he'll do the same thing that Cousins does, major movements, major style changes, major innovators, but he's really into details, either biographical details, ways that the directors came up with their stories, and so on and so forth. So if you like detail, 
where I think there's some digression in this book. That's what I feel like I don't like about it. And it's not as helpful for learning. This would be a little bit above, I think, the average viewer's pay grade. And definitely you want to know more when reading this book, when diving into it. Cousins is a little bit more accessible, the story of film. So that's why I recommend it to most people. Do you have a book that covers the history of cinema or does the history of film from the beginning to present day? Do you like any books like that? And I don't mean textbooks and I don't mean books only for scholars. I mean books that sort of lay people can get into if they like film or if they've watched enough movies to be dangerous with the knowledge that they have. Are there any other recommendations you have? Please put them in the comments. We'd love to hear from them. And I encourage you all to scour the comments because there's smart people here who know a lot of books and a lot about movie history. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to this channel for more great content. Have a great day.